Welcome back to the channel, everyone. As always, I'm your host, Michael DiNicola, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite characters of all time, Mr. Wade Wilson, AKA the Merc with Mouth, AKA Deadpool. Stick around. All right, where to begin? You know what? I'll start when I first, when I first met Deadpool. I first met Mr. Wade Wilson back in the 90s back in his heyday. I was but a wee boy. And you see, the 90s then were a much different time. For those of you who didn't, you know, actively live through them, even though I was a, I was a kid, somebody, somebody, somewhere, somehow, got me a Deadpool comic book. Maybe it was my dad, maybe an uncle, maybe a friend in school, I don't know. One way or another, Deadpool found his way into my greedy, gross little childhood hands and I'm pretty sure it was love at first sight. Now, 90s Deadpool is much different from modern day Deadpool. 90s Deadpool, he wasn't just a reverent and, you know, a smart ass. He was a brutal murderer. <laughs> he was a true anti-hero in the most bombastic 90s way imaginable. You see, the 90s in comic books, it was a very special time, the same way like the 60s were in the golden age years of comic books. The early 90s in comic books literally had the creator of Deadpool in a Levi's commercial with uh, one of the biggest names in directing at the time, Spike Lee. They did a, they did a fucking Le Levi's jean commercial from a creator of a comic book in a, in a TV ad. It just goes to show you that once upon a time, people actually read comic books. They didn't just read comic books, they loved reading comic books. People lined up in the streets for hours to get comic books. Could you imagine? Stuff like that doesn't really happen these days. You know, the same way maybe you remember people lining up to see movies. Maybe you remember even in two, you know, from like 2007 to 2010, 11, people lining up in the streets waiting on the iPhone or iProducts like dummies. Well, guess what? In the early 90s, people did that exact same thing for comic books. It was a weird time. Lots of flannel, lots of big jeans, and lots of people reading comic books. Weird, really weird. Deadpool, like any other character that's existed for, you know, 20 plus years, 30 years. Hell man, Superman's been around, what, 75 years at this point? Over? Longer? These characters, they exist for such a long time. Their stories themselves, they've been written all types of ways from all kinds of perspectives, from all different viewpoints. When you take a look at Deadpool and you say, I like Deadpool, well, who's Deadpool? Because that can mean any number. Are you talking about McGinnis's Deadpool, Liefeld? Are you talking about uh, Joe Bad's Deadpool? Are you talking about Rick Remender's Deadpool? Are you talking about Brian Bozane's Deadpool? The characters had so many different iterations. You simply say, I like Deadpool, it's, <laughs> it's too vague. Unless, unless you're speaking in generalities, right? In my last video, when I told you that I like Spider-Man. Well, I like some of the core tenets of what I believe makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. You know, uh, namely his sacrifice and his constantly being put upon by the responsibility of his gifts, you know, his gift, his curse, etc., etc. When you say I like Deadpool, I, what I take that to mean, what I mean when I say it, is that you appreciate his anti-hero-ness, his irreverence, his attitude, his fourth wall breaking. These are just some things that I feel are intrinsic to the character. He has to be annoying, <laughs> you know? He has to be like Spider-Man in that he's, he's he's quippy and he won't he won't shut the fuck up in a fight. Also, he has to kind of not give a shit, man. For any of you D&D &D nerds, you know, for any of you guys who uh, are familiar with the alignment table, Deadpool primarily falls into the chaotic neutral chaotic good zone. That is where I believe he that's where I believe he shines most when he's a character who a reluctant hero, but he's not a bad person. He's perhaps a little selfish, at times a little apathetic, a little uncaring in that, you know, he's not afraid to put a bullet between someone's eyes or hurt or maim some people, but he has his own lines that he doesn't cross. I want to tell you guys what my favorite version of Deadpool is. My personal favorite. It happens to be the Deadpool from Uncanny X-Force, written by Rick Remender. That Deadpool 
encapsulates all the aforementioned traits that I find endearing, humorous, irreverent, all those things that make Deadpool nuanced, right? He's not just killing, killing jokes, killing, killing jokes. Although that can be part of his personality, part of his character, which makes it fun. There's so much more to him, man. He's got subtleties, man. There are things in, in his personality that are heartbreaking and sad and endearing and kind and caring that will surprise you. This character sometimes gets a bad rap because he can be depicted, unfortunately, more often than I care to admit, two-dimensional. Anyway, now that you know my favorite version of Deadpool, I'm going to briefly touch on, well, we'll see how brief. I'm going to touch on the artwork. I'm going to give you a whole breakdown of why I'm drawing, what I'm drawing, how I'm drawing, and then we'll touch on some MCU rumors. Let's talk about the artwork. Hey, there's some artwork happening. So if you were watching in the background, you might have noticed that this started off as a thumbnail and then it started off as a guy sitting on a bench and that guy turned out to be Deadpool. Spoiler alert, this, this part of the drawing, him sitting on the uh, top of the bench, he's actually, he's actually hitching a ride to, in my idea, he's headed to the MCU and he's kind of uh, hitchhiking to the MCU or he's at a bus stop, one of those things. And I thought I'd have him waiting on a bench. Turns out I actually don't like this pose. <laughs> so uh, just to do a call back to a few videos ago, never be afraid to scrap an idea. Always be looking to see if the idea is working, if you feel, you feel good about it. And if the idea isn't working, scrap it. Sometimes there's no amount of tinkering that you can do that will fix something that's just busted from the start. And that was that was the figure in this. So at some point, I'm gonna look at the figure of Deadpool sitting on the bench, and I don't know if it was the anatomy or what, but I did not like it. Figured I could do better. Oh, here's a little heads up. That perspective, the perspective that I'm doing, this kind of weird fish eye-like globe, I'm gonna call it globe perspective. Honestly, it might actually be six point perspective. Lately, I've been playing fast and loose with the perspective tools. I've been having more fun with it. Like here, for example, where's the vanishing point? It's curvilinearly there. <laughs> you know, which vanishing point are you talking about? Are you talking about the X, the Y, or the, where are they? Mm. <laughs> I was really just flying by the seat of my pants. And here I go, I'm working on a new version of the figure. I figured, you know what? No, no, I don't want him sitting down. I want him more, I want him being more participatory in the scene. So he's actively gonna be sticking his thumb out. Another camera angle, similar to the one when I was working on with the Mandalorian. So one I'm trying to get better at. Or shortening. Or shortening is a mother and I've still not quite got my little hands on it. But I'm trying, it's the best you can hope for. A lot of this was me constantly looking to see if the perspective, well, it's a curvilinear fisheye perspective. So things are gonna be wonky. Here's the tip of the day, gang. The perspective doesn't always have to align perfect. It just has to be what I like to call good enough. Only an absolute lunatic would pull up your artwork and take a ruler to it. This vanishing point isn't aligning perfectly with your blah, blah, blah. Fuck that person, dude. That person is missing the goddamn point of what you're trying to do. Me, I want a fun, quirky Deadpool drawn. He's being, he's being silly. He's holding a cat for some reason. And you know what? The perspective is equally as silly as he is. And yeah, it might be a little weird. It might be a little wonky. It might not add up. But that is, n that is not what you should be primarily focused on. Your first, your first and most important worry, despite the anatomy and the composition and blah, 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 blah. All those things are important. But really, I think of singular illustration pieces like this as storytelling. If somebody's looking at this, what's drawing them in? What kind of emotion are you trying to elicit? For me in this, it's whimsy. It's whimsy and I want some details in the background that people are gonna look at and 
Maybe have a little bit of fun with the colors, but that's it, man. It's a Deadpool drawing and it's Deadpool being silly. And I want to have a little, I want to have a little fun with this drawing. You should strive to get those things right. The composition, the anatomy, the perspective as to the best of your abilities. However, if something is a little off because fucking Poe body's nervic, so be it. You got to be able to, like my friend John Moore says, you got to be able to forgive yourself. I forgave myself on the perhaps weird perspective. I wanted it. I wanted it to be finished. <laughs> I wanted it to be, oh yeah, uh, to steal from Jake Parker. Finished, not perfect. That relates to the John Moore line of forgiving yourself as an artist for not being perfect. It's more important that you get work out there, that you get things done. Even in this very YouTube video, I guarantee you there are some things <laughs> that I probably could work on, but it's more, what's more important that I work on getting a video quote unquote perfect, which is not possible. Or I put the video out there for you guys to check it out and enjoy, hopefully. Right. So I could, you know, build something so I could get better at a thing. You can't get better at a thing unless you finish your project. If you're constantly needling and tinkering and noodling and not finishing, you're going to stack me. Okay, now that we've gone over both my art process and the reasons why I like the character so much, let's have a little fun. Let's talk about some of the rumors that I've been hearing about Deadpool and his role to come in the MCU because, yo, <laughs> the rumors have been going crazy. So listen up. Ooh, let's talk rumors. Every rumor I'm about to say, take with the fattest grain of salt some of these rumors just downright conflict one another. That's how nonsensical the rumor mill is. I'll give you, I'll just, I'll jump right in. Rumor comes down the, you know, down the pike, pipe, whatever, man, down the river. <laughs> A few weeks back, Kevin Feige and Ryan Reynolds, they've settled all their disagreements and Deadpool 3 is on the table. Not only that, Ryan Reynolds has signed the biggest contract in MCU history. The most movies, bigger than, he's gonna be in more movies than any other MCU character. That's the rumor. Big, big deal, papers have been signed, yada, yada. Come like a week ago, new rumor comes out, Kevin Feige doesn't want Deadpool in the MCU. That's the new rumor. The complete antithesis of what the first rumor was. Feige doesn't want Deadpool in the MCU because he doesn't fit with the narrative. Both rumors, make a certain kind of sense. Dude, Deadpool is a billion dollar franchise in the current state of things because of, you know, El, El Cufe. Movie studios have been bled dry. Deadpool is a meal ticket. So that makes sense. Signing on, signing Ryan Reynolds, that's guaranteed money in your pocket. Well, of course, why wouldn't you do that? Also, having to fit Deadpool in this established universe, uh, that, that could be really tough, man. Think about it like this. Imagine, one of the pre-existing Marvel movies, except with Deadpool. It kind of, he kind of throws a monkey bar. Monkey bar? Nope. He kind of throws a monkey wrench into the whole works. Because of his attitude and quips and nonsensical, goofy nature and fourth wall breaking. Just imagine him in Endgame or imagine him in Infinity War. It would be, it, it could really be bad. It could really undo a lot of narrative. So for, for that, I understand. The next few rumors go like this. In the Deadpool 3, Ryan Reynolds wants a bunch of MCU heroes, which of course would make sense. If Deadpool 3 happens, you're going to want Deadpool to interact with the new MCU. And you know the nature of Deadpool. Uh, this leads into the next rumor. With the nature of Deadpool breaking the fourth wall, He's going to talk about the merger in some way. He's going to talk about the reboot, which leads to this rumor. His world is essentially going to be rebooted and he is going to be the only one that remembers. So all the other cast members, all the other surviving members of X-Force, uh, you know, Cable, Domino, etc., etc. They're not going to remember who he is, <laughs> but he's going to remember them. So that's the rumor. It makes sense. I honestly don't know how they're going to make this work. Oh, you know, I forgot about one last rumor. One last rumor is that they're pushing for a Spider-Man Deadpool movie. Would it be amazing? Would it be awesome? Would it be a guaranteed success? Absolutely. 
you know, two of the most identical characters in the MCU. But yeah, I would say that's a fucking sure, that's a sure thing. Anyway, those are the rumors. I don't know how they're going to make this work. However, I can't wait to see him interacting with MCU heroes, established MCU heroes. I can't wait to see him interacting with Spider-Man. I can't wait to see him interacting with, well, fucking any, any member of the event, any member of the Avengers that's still alive, Thor, Hulk, Hawkeye. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and assume it's going to be awesome. Who knows? I could be wrong. I've been wrong in the past and I'm going to be wrong in the future. Let me know below what you guys think of all these rumors. Let me know what you think of Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. Definitely let me know if you have a favorite Deadpool that I didn't mention or if there's maybe some Deadpool tidbits that uh, you want to share. Hey, look at this. In the time lapse video, I am just about done with the coloring. Let me just toss in a few extra tidbits of uh, some Procreate coloring advice. If you're wondering how I brought this from complete grayscale to color, I got two words for you, friend. Gradient maps. What I did was I duplicated the grayscale uh, layer. I flattened it, I duplicated it. I tossed about three different of the three different grayscale layers, all the same. And I tossed them into the gradient map um, adjustable layer. I tried it with some reds, I tried it with some yellows, and then I tweaked the adjustment layers, you know, your multiply, your color layer, to kind of make them blend together in order to get this effect. Thanks for watching, everyone. Appreciate you guys making it to the end. Also, shout out to my patrons. Thank you. And huge thank you to everybody who's been liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. You guys are awesome. I almost just used the F word right there. I almost just used the F word right there, but I didn't. I'm behaving myself. Please don't bury me, YouTube algorithm. Aside from that, catch me live on Twitch four days a week. Check out the links in the description for merch and prints and original artwork, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.